Would you like to know the types of enterprise architect interview questions that you'll face on an enterprise architect interview? Would you like to know the kinds of answers that will get you hired on your next enterprise architect interview? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name's Mike. I'm the CEO of GoCloud Careers, and I've been an enterprise architect now for a little over 25 years. I've interviewed thousands of architects over the last few decades. And today I'm gonna to talk about answers that'll get you hired on an enterprise architect interview. I'm gonna give you five questions and I'm gonna give you the answers that would get you hired. And I'm gonna give them to you from my perspective. Now there's other ways you can answer these questions, but I want you to understand the thinking that uh, we're looking for when we interview someone for an enterprise architect role. We're typically looking for that business leadership as well as the technology knowledge combined in the same person. So the questions we're gonna give you, we're gonna expect an answer that brings everything back to the business, even if we discuss technology. The first question that I might ask someone today, especially today is, what emerging technologies do you believe will have the biggest impact on enterprise architecture? Now, there's a lot of ways you can answer this. I'll tell you how I would answer this. The two emerging technologies that I feel that will make the biggest impact on our future in enterprise architecture are actually AI and robotics and the combination of the two. And I'll explain why I feel this way. AI is not new, but recently the compute power has gotten so powerful that the things AI are doing are getting better every day. We're actually in a world where, where Google has 25% of their code written by AI. And that's just in its infancy. So imagine where AI will take us. Employers always struggle to find the right type of people to work in their environments and often struggle to maintain employee productivity. So AI can supercharge employees' performance. AI can do what employees are doing in many cases, which can mitigate labor shortages. And you can see the impacts out there. In about 2024, uh, almost $640 billion was actually spent on AI initiatives, and it's expected to grow to about $2.5 trillion in the next 10 years. So we can see that businesses are investing heavily into this. Businesses can use AI for better forecasts. They can use AI for staff augmentation. They can enhance the productivity of their employees. They can make, uh, they can analyze data, whether it be improved their marketing campaign. So AI can do a lot of things for businesses and businesses are investing accordingly. Especially we feel that AI and robotics are going to change things dramatically. And when we combine the two, we will have intelligent labor that can build things like cars, for example. We can have AI that can fix things and AI that can potentially be even assistance to pe assistance or virtual AI robotic employees. So we see a lot for that. So we see a lot of potentials for these technologies with AI. We think things like customer support, a lot of additional work in marketing, software development, autonomous vehicles, autonomous planes, and so many other things. And when we start combining that AI with robotics, almost anything is possible. So those are the two biggest factors I see moving right now as it pertains to new technology and enterprise architecture. So the next question I might ask are, what are the key considerations when planning a cloud migration strategy? And while I might ask this for a cloud architect or an AWS solutions architect, I'm also going to ask this for an enterprise architect because let's face it, uh, most enterprises in some way, shape, or form are in a multi-cloud environment. So if I ask someone what are the key considerations when planning a cloud migration strategy, I want to know that the person understands cloud computing, that they're thinking about their workloads, they're thinking about what's the right environment. They're not just saying move to the cloud. So the answer I'm looking for is something, well, before uh, planning a cloud migration strategy, we really have to think about a lot of things. The first thing we need to think about is what are we trying to achieve? Because we can't pick the technology before we know what our actual goals are. The next thing we need to do prior to cloud migration is really evaluate the workloads because some workloads are just not well suited to the cloud. A high volume, high throughput workload may be many times cheaper in the data center. Likewise, a sporadic uh, application might be much cheaper in the cloud. So we have to evaluate where is the cloud, where is the application gonna run best? Should it be in the cloud at all? 
Then we need to evaluate what are the performance requirements because we may be able to deliver better performance requirements in the data center, specifically with regards to lower latency and higher performance storage. So we need to evaluate that long before we make any kind of uh, recommendations. We need to also think about what level of availability we need. And this will determine what our architecture needs to look like. Uh, how many clouds and how many data centers per clouds, for example. We need to determine if the organization has the ability and the readiness to, for change. And do they have the people that can manage a new environment? And if so, what kind of training and development needs are there for their people? And then if we decide we're going to migrate to the cloud, what kind of cloud migration strategy? Think your seven hours of a cloud migration, for example. Do we just rehost it, lift and shift it over there? Do we re-architect it into something cloud? native. So there's a lot that needs to go into a cloud migration strategy, and that's a sample of the things that you should think about. Now, I often ask clients, how do you ensure that IT strategies align with business goals? Now, this is a critical question for enterprise architects. We have to understand that 70 to 80% of all architectures, cloud architectures, technology projects in general, provide no business value. So if we're hiring an enterprise architect, it's to fix that and make sure that the company's business needs and their technology needs are aligned. So this is a very important question to answer. So if I answer the question, how do you ensure that your IT strategies are aligned with your business goals? I'm going to want an answer something like this. The key to aligning your IT strategies and your business goals is to start with the executive team first. Learn the vision for the architecture, learn the vision for the business, and learn what they're trying to achieve. Now, at that point, if we know what the, the client's desire is to achieve, we can even figure out what those key measures of success are by asking the client. Now, once we figure out what in scope and the vision and goals for the architectures, now we need to engage with various stakeholders. We need to get the perspectives of other people that have a perspective in the business and a stake in the business to be able to integrate their feedback and make sure that we accommodated all of their needs. We're also going to need to engage with stakeholders to get their support and buy-in. So when it's time to deploy the architecture, we can make sure that their support is there to make sure their employees typically follow uh, the procedures and use the new technology. We also have to map out the current business architecture. We need to understand the organizational chart, the business processes, the key value stream. So we understand what gives that organization its competitive advantage and how it works. And that way we need to know the way things are going before we change anything because we need to know our starting point. And then we need to figure out what is the most optimal way to do things in the future, the future business architecture, if you will. And that involves the people, the processes and technology and how that's all going to work together. So we need to figure that out. Now, once we know the business's goals and we have all the input and guidance from the key stakeholders, only now are we in a position to start thinking about what we can do about it. So now once we have this information, we can bring in a team of people that can evaluate the organization's current technology. Now we can then have a team of people that we can help create a new design strategy or a new architecture that's based upon that client's business needs. Now, in order to do that, we will determine the types of technology that are needed and the architecture of technology that's tech needed. And we will document that architecture and we'll present it back to the organization stakeholders and make sure that this architecture will address their needs. We'll then typically get the stakeholder feedback and put that back into our architecture. And we'll repeat that process of uh, redesign things or redesign parts of it, send it back to the stakeholders until we get an overall consensus from the stakeholders that this is something that they actually want. Now, at that point, we typically need to finalize the architecture, determine how the architecture will be created and when it'll be created, the kind of people they need, uh, what kind of levels of training that are needed, and what kind of marketing plan is even going to be necessary to bring that architecture to life to make sure the employees use it and adopt the new technology. And at some point, we need to measure the architecture for success against those key business initiatives and see how well we did and consistently optimize and tune the architecture to make sure it's always providing business value. Now, I also might ask a question like this. How do you measure the value that's been delivered by the enterprise architecture initiatives? Now, that's something key to see if the enterprise architect knows the real goals of enterprise architecture and if they know how to solve real problems and how would they measure them. Get a lot of information from a question like this. 
So what I'm typically looking at is an answer that says, well, here's how we can measure our success. We're going to measure it in a lot of ways. So one of the ways we can talk about is, did we save costs through our IT initiatives? Now, that's not the be all and end all, but that's one of the things we can measure. The next thing we really want to measure is the return on investment. We want to compare the cost of implementing these uh, enterprise architecture initiatives against the uh, financial benefits that we actually derived from it. So if we spend a billion dollars and our goal was to enhance operational efficiency, do we get $2 billion of operational inefficiency? If our goal was to increase revenue, did what level of revenue was increased by the enterprise architecture? Now we could also be measuring process improvement and I suggest we do. So we can track improvements in say IT operations, things like uh, reduced downtime, uh, faster application deployment times, increased availability, increased uh, interoperability, whatever. We can measure those types of things. We can also manage risk mitigation, for example. After the enterprise architecture initiative, uh, were we more compliant with something? Did we get hacked less, for example? Uh, are our compliance audits uh, are now in, in line with regulations, for example? We can even measure things like agility. So since we've had this new enterprise architecture, has the business been able to adapt to new requirements, emerging technologies, or market changes faster? Because a good, flexible enterprise architecture would provide that. Did the uh, enterprise architecture provide the ability for the business to innovate faster? And here we can measure the number and successes of uh, new projects or innovative projects that were accelerated by a result of our enterprise architecture initiative. So what you can see is we're measuring a lot of things. We're measuring financial metrics like return on investment. We're measuring operational efficiency. We're measuring risk mitigation. We're me measuring business agility. And these are the kind of things that really go into enterprise architecture, at least a good enterprise architecture. I might also ask someone what goes into business continuity planning. And here I'm looking for the person to know that to keep a business's operations up and going, we need to figure out what's critical to the business and how the business operates. So one of the things we have to do is conduct what's called the business impact analysis. And here we're going to determine critical business functions, critical business processes, critical systems and resources that are necessary for that company to function. We're also going to assess the impact, like the financial impact, the operational impact, and the reputational impact of any kind of disruption on the business. We also have to determine how long the business can be down, uh, maximum tolerable downtime because there's da before there's damage, long-term damage to the business. And we also need to determine how much data we could potentially lose. And that will be your recovery plan objective. Your maximum tolerable downtime is how much downtime the business can tolerate. And we'll therefore have a recovery time objective that's less than that, which is how fast we get our systems or our people and our processes back online. Now, in any kind of business impact analysis, we have to perform a risk analysis. We have to identify any threats and vulnerabilities we have in the systems, risks for things like natural disasters or a cyber attack or an equipment failure. And we have to analyze the likelihood of each type of disruption occurring. And then we need to prioritize our risk based upon the possibility. Sure, a blizzard's possible in Miami, but a hurricane's much more likely. So we can think about things that are theoretically possible versus the things that are, are more likely to occur. And then typically we need to create a recovery strategy. So we have to establish recovery procedures, define strategies, whether it's data backup, IT backup are, and recovery, or uh, fun business function recovery. We have to determine the kind of resources that will be necessary in our disaster and our business, I'm sorry, a business continuity plan. What people do we need? What equipment do we need? What kind of technology do we need? And we may have to develop workarounds like work from home or work in an alternative site for essential business functions. Now, with any business continuity plan, we actually have to document the plan and uh, communicate that plan and get feedback on the plan to see that it's good. And then having a plan is no good if we don't train people on the use of the plan. So that means we'll have to conduct uh, training and awareness sessions. We may even have to do simulation exercises of the plan. 
and then constantly will retest, just like people do a firewall. We'll run periodic tests, simulations, tabletop exercises to test the plan and make sure that it will function smoothly in an, in an, in an emergency environment. So in this video, we discussed five interview questions for enterprise architects on enterprise architect interviews. If you'd like to become an enterprise architect or a cloud architect or an AI architect or a security architect or a cloud security architect, we've got free webinars for the architecture career of your choice. Check them out. They're in the description of this video or pop into any, enter, any of our webinars and we'll cover the architect career of your desires. On these free webinars, we'll talk about what we do as an architect, the skills you need as an architect, and they're live and free on Zoom, so we'll answer any type of questions you have about becoming an architect or other things that are important to you, live and free. And the link to register for the free webinars, as well as many free resources in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video on enterprise architect interview questions, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your enterprise architecture career, your cloud architect career, your AI architect career, or your security architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another architecture video or a free architecture webinar. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you soon.